Welcome to one of the biggest launches at the Cannes Boat Show. Behind me here is the Sunseeker 100 yacht, and we have come up early to come and get a first look at it for you. Now, this is quite an unusual new boat. You can see that that bow area is really quite tall. It lifts up and over with these huge windows all the way down the top sides. And that is because right behind here is the owner's cabin. So it's a main deck owner's cabin on a 100 foot yacht. But let's go and take a closer look at some of the details. So a few facts and figures first of all. The cost of this new beauty is around about 8.3 million pounds ex tax. So probably more like 10 once you've finished specking it up with a few extra details. We've got some size figures here. Uh, no, oh no, hang on, that's, that's the 90 ocean size figures opposite. They are down here. So we can see it is 97 foot 11 inches, 29.85 meters. It is 22 foot 8 inches wide, 6.9 meters. Has four guest cabins plus the master suite. There is accommodation for 10 guests plus five crew and engine options with 5,280 horsepower. Top speed about 29 knots and range up to 1,300 nautical miles at 12 knots. So let's get a look at what it has on board. So we can see this area here is a huge hydraulic bathing platform and right behind this section here is the clever extend seating system. Now we've seen this in action before on the Ocean 90 and 88 yacht but this whole section here opens up and it can face both ways. So either you can have this folded down and then you have a lovely sun lounger looking aft across the stern or the whole thing can lift up and then you open these two glass balustrades and you can have the sun pads facing in to the raised cockpit area. So really clever solution that works on two different levels and can either face into or out of the boat. But you can get a little impression of what that's like from up here. So these are the two gates that open. You can see they just pull open, lift up and swing open. And then you've got this lovely sociable seating area here where you've got these two corner benches and then the extend seats facing into the cockpit. And you have that lovely raised socializing space. So elsewhere in this aft cockpit section, you can see under here is where you have the secondary station. If you want a helm station where you can be right next to the stern so when you're berthing stern two in the mediterranean you've got really close control there you can see some of the mooring gear here huge winch and cleat and then a little locker for the rope tails all the controls are here both for the x10 seating you can see here are the buttons for that and then the telescopic passerelle so that will whir out from there and provide a passerelle onto the shore and then of course the hydraulic bathing platform too so there are the seats that you can see how they lift up or go down and lights and everything else. So all the controls for that exactly where you need them. Big glass swing gates, teak topped, that can help shut off that area too, provide a bit of extra safety. But it's all about connection with the water. So you've got these lovely glass transom gates that let you have a great view through. You can see there's also side deck gates, a bit too high here, but again, just gives easier access into the water or indeed onto a pontoon. So where are we gonna start? Let's start inside. So big sliding glass doors, they're manual, but one, two, four section, they slide all the way over. We're not gonna do that right at the moment because we want a little bit of peace and quiet here. In fact, I might just slide that closed. But here is the main saloon. There are those four glass doors. Oh, it's wonderfully cool and quiet in here. Uh, but that's the kind of impression that you want to get here. You've got this huge open seating area, all low level, all quite informal, but big wrap of seating, very smart little chess game laid out on the coffee table. It's all low level so that you can appreciate the views through these big glass windows all around the saloon. Massive TV, that's not a high-low. You can see that is actually fixed there. There's nowhere for it to drop down into but you've got these wonderful doors on either side. You don't get the full impression because we're sort of hemmed in at the show, but these are full height glass panels. And even in the bulwarks outside, you can see there are glass sections in there, again, so that you can look straight through and appreciate the view. So big open plan dining area, that's all part of this main saloon. 
Very stylish overhead lighting. You can see these inset LED lights. And exactly the same on this side, big glass full height windows and those glass inserts in the boardwalk so you can see through them. And then access through to the crew area. We'll go and have a look at the crew area in a minute, but let's just carry on forward for the moment. Now, if we move here, you can see there is access down to the guest cabins. We'll obviously have a look there in a minute, but first let's keep moving forward. This little lobby area here is rather nice actually, because there's a bit of storage just for extra bits and pieces. There's a lovely day heads here. Again, really nice on a big boat like this to be able to have a day heads that you can use without having to go down into anybody's cabin. Another access point in here. This is for the sort of electronics machinery, uh, a lot of the onboard entertainment, There's even some flares stored in there. So lots of useful storage areas. And the little lobby area here, you can see there is a wine cooler in there and more, just again, lots of, oh, I, I, did you see that? That was a little electric push. So when you touch that door, I'm not even sure quite how I did it. There we go. It just swings open a little bit so you can access the wine fridge. Very cool. An electric door on a fridge, that's a bit of a first. Right, now let's go through into the main area. This is the owner's cabin. You can see what makes this so special. So as you come forward, this is the full beam owner's cabin forward on the main deck. And not only do you get fantastic views out through these big side windows in the top sides, which we showed you earlier from outside, but the real piece de resistance is this. This is the door onto your own little private four deck terrace. We're gonna have a look out there in a minute, but just while we're here, let's admire the cabin itself. Big bed, obviously island bed, facing forwards, rather lovely. Quite fancy headboard here, lots of texture and detail. They're really good at their little details at the moment, Sunseeker. And even little recessed lighting, bedside tables, nice little kind of soft, stool cushion seating area but crucially it doesn't get in the way of those windows so you can appreciate the view out there are some opening ports in there and then ensuite bathroom as you'd expect really big actually i mean this is huge for a boat of this size massive walk-in shower area overhead rain shower normal shower pull out but absolutely huge area twin sinks and then very nicely a separate toilet in this section here. You can see just works really well. But let's go out and have a look. There's lots of other people trying to do exactly the same thing, see around, but I think we can probably open this now. If I just pull that open, excuse me, <laughs> thank you. And look at this, how special is that? Direct access from your cabin to this lovely little foredeck area right at the bow. So you are right at the stem of the boat, two lovely deck chairs, prime position right at the bow. Imagine what it must be like sitting here underway. Don't want to be going too fast. I think you stick to a probably displ a displacement speed but sitting there drinking a coffee or a gin and tonic in the evening. That is so cool. Of course it is a crew area too. They will need to access some of these lines when mooring up and there's lots of space for storing all their kit too. But that is really quite special. Now we'll take a look at the deck area up here in a minute, but first let's go and view the rest of the guest cabins. But one of the keys is that you are able to flow up and down these different levels here. So you can see there are steps up here to the rest of the guest spaces up above. But really clever, there's nice little sunshade too so you don't get too hot in the full, full day sun. So we slightly skipped over this because there was someone here earlier but you can see there is also a desk area here so the owner can do their work take their work with them if they want to, or use it as a vanity and makeup desk area. Very nice light oak finish, lots of soft leathers, and a full walk-in wardrobe. 
again very nice to have that kind of luxury on a boat of this size so it is under 100 foot it does come under the 24 meter load line length so you can skipper it yourself you don't have to have a full commercial license obviously masses more storage in here lots of wardrobe space safe all these little storage areas so as well as that walk-in wardrobe there are plenty of storage spaces so let's drop down and have a quick look at the guest cabins while we're here sorry we're having to make our way around there's lots of people interested in a new boat like this but let's drop down into the guest cabins so nice little lobby area here a few little feature artworks and then we can either turn back towards the stern of the boat and there is a lovely double cabin here obviously they are all en suite all come with their own bathroom sorry we're getting some slightly funny light effects here from the led lighting let's stay in the cabin itself big double bed again lots of storage lots of nice feature elements and then there is another double opposite so they're pretty much mirror effect you can see there's one on the port side and this is the one on the starboard side so we're still facing towards the stern of the boat here exactly the same big double bed big windows again it's a shame you don't get the full effect because we're relatively early in the morning and hemmed in at the show but lots of floor space around the bed big tv very nice little dressing area all on these sprung cupboards so there's almost no handles all minimist very lovely ensuite bathroom again and then moving forward into the other two guest cabins and in this lobby area again lots of thoughtful space so there's actually a storage unit here for as you can see masses and masses of towels you never have too many towels on a boat like this with guests staying on board and yet more storage for all the linen under there and then there are two further cabins and I rather like the way they've done this so they've they're not quite symmetrical this is a slightly smaller cabin because it's got the twin bed in uh, sorry the double bed in but again big windows obviously on the suite really big bathroom in here all very nicely done again lots more storage and in this case these rather lovely lift out lockers again beautiful soft leather opening porthole that same textured bedhead arrangement and you can see there is a drop down Pullman berth in here it's a little bit hard for me to reach I might do that in the other cabin but you can see that that drops down if you really need an extra berth you can have one more little kids berth up there and then this one here this has got the twins in I think they are actually the same size but somehow this looks bigger because you've got so much more floor space between the beds but you can see they've got this set up as twins I think those can slide across I don't know if that's a standard or an optional feature but you can have the flexibility of a twin or a double there but really good floor area between the two beds and you can see here is another Pullman berth I might just be able to pull that down at least partially you can see you pull that that releases it and you can see that there is a bed in there I won't pull it all the way down it's quite a heavy thing but again it just adds to the flexibility it means you can have three people sleeping in these cabins if you need to again ensuite bathroom exactly the same so lots of different flexibility and options you've got these four cabins down here all a good size you're not going to feel hard done by whichever of those cabins you get and then of course that massive owner's cabin forward but now let's go up let's just take you through the cruise spaces so here we are back in the main dining area you've got this lovely open plan dining station you can sit 10 people around this table no problem at all and you can see there is direct access from here through into the galley space so looks a little bit busy why don't we just you coming out of there sorry thank you so let's have a look through in the galley space so this is very much going to be a crew area on a boat like this but you have got direct access to the dining area obviously huge refrigerated storage you can see the size of these they're all the same but both levels there's four big fridges there serving station here with a little mini sink coffee maker lots of storage and then 
cooking zone here. Again, they've done well to get two hobs here, two cooking hobs, so you've got a total of eight rings there. Got the oven underneath. Good work surface here, sink over here. Not the largest sink I've ever seen, but you'll have the dishwasher and everything, so should be able to cope with that. There's the dishwasher in there. All Miele kit. Ooh, that's rather nicely done, very clever. All carefully partitioned so that the knives and forks and cutlery and everything all fit in. And again, lots of overhead storage too. Microwave up there. And then down into the crew space. I did ask the captain earlier if we could have a quick peek down here. There's somebody else already down there. You okay if I drop You're down? Welcome, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Here we go. So you can see there is a crew mess area down here. Quite a good space actually for a 100 foot yacht like this. So there is actually somewhere where they can hang out and socialize without being in the main guest spaces. They've got their own area here. You can see there is a fridge. There's a decent sized sink down here. Washing machine, dryer, TV. And just knock to make sure. So we got one, sorry, <laughs> really sorry. This very kind chap has uh, already given me permission to have a very quick peek in here. But you can see we've got an ensuite cabin there. We've got a single crew cabin there, again, ensuite. And then moving forward, yet another ensuite, ensuite bunk cabin here. So really good crew spaces for a yacht of this size. Coping okay, it's all right, it's pretty yeah, comfortable. Oh, lovely. <laughs> You're very please, please good. Please you sure? Go on then, let's have a no, quick no. peek. You're very kind. Thank you. You can see that's sort of a mirror version of the, the, the other one next door. We've got twin bunks here and an ensuite. So all the crew cabins are ensuite. Right? All the crew cabins that's are ensuite. That's really nice. Very comfortable. Excellent, thank you. And you can see there's also controls on the bulk, on the uh, bulkhead here, so you can keep an eye on some of the key features. We've got fuel, water capacity, and basic navigational stuff. So really handy to be able to keep an eye on that even when you're coming down and having a bite to eat and also VHF and intercom. So let's pop back upstairs. We've seen that. You can see that is direct access out this door here. I think we're gonna go back through this way to appreciate the full length of it. Let's go, actually let's go up to the raised pilot house. Now, this is where the captain gets to work. You can see this is the fully enclosed raised pilot house, the bridge deck. So this is where everything happens and is in fact the only helm station on the boat. There is not an outside one. Everything happens from here and you're on that raised deck level. You're not quite at the flybridge level, that's a tiny bit higher, but you're above the main deck and just behind the start of that forward owner's cabin. You can see the helm station itself, three big Simrad glass bridge screens. I mean, they are as big as they come. I'm not quite sure what size that is, but they are absolutely massive. Got fantastic view of everything going on on board. This one, we've obviously got it set with a camera looking into the engine room, the main navigation screen, and here are all the stats and figures. Again, a repeat of that screen downstairs where you can see exactly what the fuel capacity is. There's 13,000 litres this boat carries. We've got about half, half tanks at the moment, just over 6,000. Fresh water capacity, that's 1,600 litres. Grey tank, 1,100. Black tank, 1,100. Throttles for the two MTU engines. We've got twin MTUs on this one. Side power controls, that's hydraulic thrusters, bow thruster and stern thruster gives you very good control, close quarter control of the, of the boat. And obviously, as well as these being touch screens, you've also got uh, manual control of it through here. And this is autopilot, so everything you need, very clear, all within easy reach, and the traditional compass up on top. Now these are very steeply rate screens. They have got the sun shades on at the moment. Be interesting to see what kind of view you get from here. but. You are in full control of everything. You've got view out the side, and then you go up onto the main deck. And it's rather nice to have a little seating area here so other members of the crew or guests can come and see 
what it takes to control a yacht like this. Now, this is where things start to get really, really interesting. So this is up on the flybridge deck and this is purely an entertaining space. So on traditional flybridge yacht, you'd probably have an outside helm station here. Clearly there's no need for that. You've got it all in internal in that raised pilot house. So there are two lovely corner seating there, it's corner seat here. And you can see these are, look like they're almost floating, they're underlit, but it gives a very nice, and it gives sort of extra foot room underneath the seats themselves. Really nice little sort of sociable corner zones with a couple of director's chairs. Big, big dining area here, and you can see this is already set for 12 people. That's a really wide teak table. Big bar area over on the starboard side, four bar stools and lots of good stuff going on behind here. You can see we've got an ice maker in there, twin fridges there. I think there are two more fridges there. Storage, sink, really lovely. You can imagine sitting there with a cocktail or two of an evening. And under here, there is the grill. So the chef can get to work there, grill up some prawns or a steak in full sight of the guests and then this fantastic spa pool at the stern of the flybridge area lovely couple of steps up with grab rails and that infinity pool effect you can look through the glass end of the spa pool and the glass balustrade so you get an uninterrupted view out there a couple of sun pads alongside and it is in fact full walk around so that you can get the absolute maximum effect from sitting up here, looking out over the stern. Beautiful, beautiful spot. You can see there are big speakers all around here, set in to these cockpit combings. A couple of life rafts up here, nice and accessible. And then let me show you how this all links with the forward decks. And this is the real beauty of this. So there are two big wide side decks either side of this space and that windscreen will provide really nice protection on the way so these seats here should be beautifully sheltered but look at this so these are dropping slightly they're really wide so you can walk around along here safe as you like grab rails up to waist height here and then this fantastic socializing space right forward here so this is again just below the raised pilot house but you can see the decks slope ever so slightly down in this direction and there's a big wrap of seating here big teak table again there are fridges under here everywhere you go you're never more than arms reach away from a cold beer which frankly is how it should be on a yacht like this got a big sun awning here carbon fiber poles that slot in there provide a bit of shade i mean this is the place to be and then those big sun pads further forward and you can see these backrests all flip up so that is absolutely fabulous spot to hang out imagine reading your book there looking forward over the bow nice cooling breeze just pottering along at 10 12 knots fantastic and you can see this links back down to that private owner's foredeck terrace and those are the steps up and that big glass sliding door into the owner's cabin so you can see it is a sort of private space when you want it to be but equally it all connects up to this area here lots of storage here again mostly sort of crew cleaning stuff and so on but let me just show you this is the full wraparound effect so you can see you can walk down this side too and it just means this whole raised flybridge foredeck area is all connected it's all one big space so effectively you have the full length of the boat, or very nearly the full length of it. Best part of 90 foot long entertaining space from that little discreet private area here via this foredeck space. Again, big storage under here, massive. And, and that's actually a, a, a chilled space. You can see there is a refrigerating panel there and a draining hole. So again, just more chilled storage space. That's the Fusion music system, so again you can control that from here. A couple of cup holders everywhere you look. And these, so, that, so those are the controls for the, the backrest. You can see that just whirring up and down. Nothing as crude as having to do it manually, it's all done electrically. Really cool. 
So all the way from that foredeck right back here, all the way past the bar and back down into the aft cockpit so you can see how it all just connects up. One of the easiest boats to move around I think I've come across. Again, we've got controls here. This is for the hydraulic platform. The other side was for the extend seating. Again, more lights, everything you need there. So let's now drop down. You can see either side of this saloon. It's not quite full beam. There are little decks forward. And I think that's because you can get optional opening doors there. If you want to have opening doors either side, they will open up. It's not folding balconies or anything, but it does just mean you can open them up and have a bit of fresh air coming in and this nice little walking area. It doesn't actually lead anywhere if you don't have the doors. You just come up, but you can peer over the side, put your fenders out. So it just gives you good access down either side, but not actually leading forward to the, to the foredeck area. So now this is actually access to the engine room. Let's just see if we can open that up. So you can see that swings open. There's a little cutout enabling that to swing past. And it's a very steep vertical ladder down there. So it'll be interesting to see how I manage this with camera in hand, but let's give it a go. You can see that is quite a steep vertical drop. Just move my hand position. Keep That's a long way down. One more, there we go. Okay, so this is the engine room. Now you can see we've got all the breaker panels on this forward bulkhead. We've got cooling fans either side. There's one blowing into my ear right here. Obviously need to keep the engine space as cool and workable as possible. Exactly the same over here. These are the hydraulics for the side power fins and thrusters. So it will obviously have stabilizing fins too, so that it's stable at rest and underway. Here we've got fuel filters. You can see on both sides, again, matching switch over redundancy. So you can just flick it across if one gets blocked and keep running whilst you clean the other one. And here are the two engines, which actually look relatively modest in comparison to the size of the boat. They're twin MTU, uh, just over 2,000 horsepower each, I think which gives you a top speed of around about uh, 29 knots. Um, I think this boat tends to run most of the time around about 18 knots for maximum efficiency, but really good. You've got full standing headroom. You can see I can easily stand in here and there's good clearance over the engine. So even though there is a garage area there, that doesn't actually intrude too much because these engines are relatively short, you can get over the top of both of them. You can see there is also a little deck hatch into the aft cockpit, so you can come down through there too. Let's see if we can shuffle down the side and get a bit further astern. So you can see we've got twin generators, got a Kohler generator this side, and I can see another one over there. And then here's all the battery charging. Look at that, really neat cabling. Beautifully done, all cable tied together. More cooling fans, lots of heat and sound insulation. And then the steering gear is down there in a rather dark looking little area if you need to get to it. These are the supports for the big exhaust running up through there. And I think it's much the same the other side. Just drop back through there. So again, oh, I nearly caught my microphone cable, Kohler generator, more battery chargers on this side, and a big, so you see there's the Glendening shore cable, so it all neatly stacks in there, but pulls out and plugs in, and that is the Atlas Marine shore power system there. So let's make our way. Whoop. Missed a step there. Let's see if we can clamber back out. I think this is one of the small compromises there is. It is a very steep vertical ladder. Let's see if I can climb back up there one handed. I'm sure most of the crew will be a lot more agile than I am, but that's not the easiest access 
I've ever seen. But let's swing that shut. Don't want anybody falling down there by mistake. But that's really discreet. You barely even know that door was there because it's just painted in that dark gloss, just like the rest of it. And that's shut off uh, the engines and the, d the fuel fill. So that's all discreetly tucked behind there. So let's finish up back in that half cockpit area. Take a seat after that. Need a bit of a rest after clambering up those steps. But that is the Suntica 100 yacht. It is the very latest launch with that fantastic raised flybridge area. I think that is the unique selling point along with that magnificent full beam main deck master suite. But I hope you've enjoyed the tour. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Bye for now.